Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Ahu here with KissHandLog.com. Hey, I've got this Class A B amplifier. It's mounted to the heat sink. So let's see how much power we can get out of it. We'll check the bandwidth to see how flat the gain is, the phase response, and we'll also look at the distortion. All right? Hey, let's do this thing. This is the LM3886 uh, that board I got from Amazon. It's a little less than 35 bucks, I think it was. So one thing I'm gonna, one thing I want to say, as far as powering this guy, it's got an AC to DC uh, voltage supply, so I can plug the hunter, you know, I can plug uh, voltage right from a transformer, and this guy would probably be a good match for this amp. So, uh, but right now, without getting, you know, the power supply interaction and so on, I'm going to start off with the DC power supply again, so that we can, uh, you know, not have to worry about any noise from the power supply, anything like that. We'll just start off just looking at the amplifier board. So, like I've shown before, you can run DC power into an AC input, the bridge rectifier, the steering diodes, which will just steer that voltage where it needs to go and works fine. All right, so let's do this. Okay, uh, from this view, you're looking down. I've got the heat sink kind of sitting, you know, on its edge like this, okay? And look what I did. I kind of thought this was kind of neat. I got these uh, banana jacks. They just happen to be spaced where I could screw them in to the AC inputs. So I'll just put, I mean, use a DC power supply again so I can control the input voltage. So I'll just come in here. It doesn't matter which side I put the red and black in because the rectifier will just take it and steer it the right way. There you basically steering diodes. And that's my ground reference in between. These are my probes from the power supply. So as a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and connect them right now. I'll put red, red just for fun. Doesn't matter, but, uh, and then we'll just put this ground one right here, okay? So that's how we're gonna connect the power to the input. Now, you see, I, I've got the load connected already. I've screwed that in to this, this is a four ohm load, 200 watt load. I've screwed that into the output, this right channel, I guess we'll call it the right channel. And then I put these two little wires here where I'll put the signal in. This is our input. Now you can bypass this first stage and go right into here. I'll try that next video because maybe we'll have a little different response. So we'll, we'll compare that, okay? But this looks like a pretty neat amp. We have the uh, Rubicon capacitors. I kind of showed in the last video. Here, I'll just kind of give you a quick look again if you didn't see the last video. But, uh, you know, we've got the bridge rectifier right here, the big bulk Rubicon caps, the Wema capacitors, these poly caps, you know, and uh, and then we have our two amplifiers back here. And we have uh, these intermediate stages. These are uh, 12 volt regulators. This is our uh, plus minus 12 volt power supply. So, alrighty. So that's what it looks like and we will connect it up. Connect the rest of it up at least. <laughs> Okay, so here, let me zoom out. All right, guys, so I'm gonna use this Howell test, this new uh, HT118A multimeter. I, it's a pretty nice meter. Uh, this is just one of the names it goes under. It All right, so, uh, so this meter, I'm gonna use it for reading temperature. So I've got the temperature probe in here. This is the K-type uh, temperature probe and set it degrees here. I just turned it on, we're ready. And what's nice about this, it gives me Fahrenheit and Celsius. So we'll see that. And then when we go to look at the scope, I'll put this up there so we can we can watch it too. But what what I did is I put some of what I call the monkey poop here, this little putty. I'm gonna just slide it in here and then push that in there to hold it there. And that putty stuff is just I call it monkey poo from the old days, but yeah, it's, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find it on Amazon. I think I found it one time and should you put a link, but this is just handy stuff. I've had this stuff for 20 years, probably just reuse it. All right. So we've got the thermocouple there. 
And then the current probe, I think that goes right here. This is a Hantec current probe. All right, so the Hantec current probe, uh, and I'll zero that out and set it to the 100X scale. All right, there. and then this um, coax cable with the alligator clips here, the little clip-on guys, that is my, whoops, I think this is positive. So this comes from the Siglent SDG810 arbitrary generator. That's where we'll, you know, inject our sine wave. All right, right channel, out, input, output. Now let's get some scope probes. So channel one, okay, channel one's the input. Okay, and channel two's the output. So the blue one, whoops, and I just make sure I pull these back, make sure they're in times 10 position. All right, now we got our scope probes on here, our current probe. I think we're ready to go look at our equipment setup. We'll be using the GW Instec power supply. It's a GPC 3030, and I've got this button pushed in. I'm using the series mode. This button's out. That way, this guy here, if I put both these on meters on volts, it's, they show me how many volts I'm putting out on each one. So on this one, this would be the master. So on this guy here, it's on the negative. This is the common. This, these two guys are tied together, so I could put it on either one. And then this guy is our red, our positive power. You know, and I can go all the way up to 31.6 on each side, okay? And then I push this over here, and it tells me right now I got half an amp without a signal coming in. With it just sitting here, I got a half an amp. Whoops, I think I do have a small signal. Okay, without a signal at all, it's 0.13 amps. And see, it's gonna be about 0.13 amps on both power supplies putting out. And they're both putting out 31, so I push this over here. That way I can read the current in one half the power supply and the voltage in the other half. Then I know what's going on in both halves because they track each other. All right, so let's look at the scope setup. Channel one's a yellow one. That went to the input. The blue one went to the output. That's channel two. And the current. And then channel four we're not using, so that's just turned off. Okay, so channel one is set 200 millivolts per division. Channel two is five volts. And the current is at two amps per division. And how's that math turned on? So math is channel one times channel three, but that is not quite right. So let's go multiply channel two. We want to do output times that. So we go down here to channel two. So channel two, Output times output current is power. So I got the power measurement here, and I got you know our RMS uh, voltages here for our input and our output. Okay. Well, just to, just to go over the uh, setup here, I've got these DC coupled channel one, and it's one meg inverts off full bandwidth and 10x. And this guy should be set the same way. And the reason I have DC coupling. It's only an AC signal that we're looking at, so I could put AC coupling. But I want to look at DC coupling because what if there's a DC offset? It would One of the signals would be floating um, off center. So DC coupling will tell me that. Channel 3, I got 100X, and let's see. And it's a current probe. So that is good. Full bandwidth DC coupling as well. Guys, I think it's time to turn on the power supply and crank up the input voltage. Here's the power supply turning on. Hear that? Okay, guys, so now let's start bringing up the input signal. There we go. By the way, the uh, channel 2 on the output, I switched it to 10 volts per division and the input 2 volts per division. Uh, so I kind of made that little switch. The output voltage is right here. 8 volts right now 8.18 the output current is 1.96 amps so the power is about 15.9 watts so let's go ahead and crank it up until we see some distortion oh I'm sorry I didn't show you hooking up my Keithley distortion meter so I have a coax coming from the Keithley distortion I'll show you that in just a moment but let's go ahead and bring it up so right now I'm seeing about 0.04 uh, 5 or whatever THD 
and I haven't seen it really change. It's just that last digit is kind of bouncing around. Okay, I'm kind of hitting the max of my power supply rails. So you, you see how it's starting to flatten off and we're getting this distortion here at the thing so far. And also my THD jumped up to about 0.86. So I'm gonna crank it down 0.7, 0.5. I'm gonna crank it down until it goes back to there it is, 0.045 or whatever, and it looks clean again. Okay, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the THD meter. All right, guys, so the THD is about 0.045 or 0.5, something like that. Kind of bounce around. Looks pretty good. All right, guys, I'm sorry. I meant to show you the temperature. Uh, it's sitting about 76, 78 C. I turned it off, and then I just turned it back on. So it kind of dropped down, and now it's shooting back up. Now this is a, without the fan on it, it's just on the heat sink. So you can see it does kind of creep up at this max power. And uh, 200F, 95C, so that's pretty hot. Uh, if I turn the fan on, I can cool it down. But yeah, you can kind of see, I'm just kind of showing. This thing, if you just let it sit here, you know, it's going to get pretty hot. That heat sink is, is kind of warm. Uh, that probe is right on the case of that power device. Now, I, I have to admit, I didn't use any grease on the thing, so it's not transferring heat quite as good as it could. But yeah, you can see it's getting pretty hot. If I turn on the fan, it gets kind of noisy. Uh, but I can, I think I can cool it off with the fan. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of stabilized. I don't know if it did that before I put the fan on or not. Yeah, it's slowly coming down with the fan on it. Pretty toasty, right guys? It does look like the fan's definitely bringing it down, but once it gets hot, it takes, takes a little time to come down. It's still putting out max power with the fan on. It looks like, I don't know, maybe it's hanging out here at 110C now. It's pretty hot, guys. I thought I could get it to come down a little bit more, but there we go. So, yeah, it's just going to slowly come down I think I was trying to see if we could wait and see how long oh, there goes 108 so man it's what 107 okay so 106 all right and that little monkey poo on there you know that probably takes a little while to cool down too because it's sitting on the plastic case actually went up a little bit right there this is a sine wave right I'm going to do another video where we're going to do some music. We're going to do some other kind of power test. Now, again, this is also 4 ohms. Let's go look at the Bode plot, okay? Okay, guys, so uh, part of the setup for this Bode plot, I have this uh, BNC connected to the channel 1 and the output of the uh, oscilloscope. The scope has two generators on it. So I need one of them to put into my input of my amplifier, okay? All right, so I take that generator and tied it to the input and then what I do is I go to this applications button and it comes up with all these applications and this guy if I move this out of the way says FRA for frequency frequency response analysis so I come over here select that and says yeah are you sure yep so that takes me here then from here I say setup the input is gonna be on channel one actually and output is channel 2 so generator setup I'm gonna go at 20 Hertz to 100 kilohertz see I just come over here and use these arrows and change the number this way okay yeah let's go to 100 kilohertz all right and then uh, low impedance input and we're gonna go 200 millivolts amplitude that's somewhere around half power probably Often this is done at one watt, but we're just going to do it there because I don't think this amplifier cares. So that's the setup. Here's a reference circuit showing you the connections. Input, output, generator coming in. So that's the reference circuit. And then we just hit FRA run and it runs it. Alright, so let me turn on the power supply. It was a little quiet because I had it turned off. Power supply is on. I think we're ready to go. So let's hit run. Now up here in this window, it's adjusting the the signal level or the you know the it's adjusting the scale of these signals so that you can see what's going on. So that kind of helps 
you watch your signals to uh, see if something's, you know, gone screwy or something. But everything looks okay, so I think we're doing good. All right, well that looks good, guys. Let's uh, zoom in on that window. Uh, right here, the gain, it's 15 dB gain right across. It looks pretty flat right across the frequency spectrum. Now the phase started off, you know, up here it's, uh, gosh, I don't know, it's over 42 degrees. And then it drops down. You know what, I'm gonna change this to get a zero on over here, zero setting. Here, let's, okay, so let me uh, change the scale here. I'm gonna change the scale so that we have zero degree offset, I think. So the offset's right down here and it's 10 I'll put it at 0 so it's easier to kind of see where it is away from 0 now the gain this blue line I'll just put that right on a scale it looks like it's closer to 16 dB maybe let's see I'll put this on 16 okay so 16 is in the center and 0 phase is in the center and let's see I can get cursors up here too let's do Let's go back to analyze. Okay, let's go to measure here. Turn on the cursors. Now, channel one, or cursor one is right there. So up here, it looks like it's 45, 46 degrees, and about 15.22 dB. And then right through here, it goes about 16 dB, and at 100 hertz, it's down about nine uh, degrees, and 16.2, so it's, pretty flat there. Now let me go to cursor 2, come over here, and at the furthest position it's minus 20 degrees and 15.7, so almost about a half a decibel in gain across here. That's pretty darn good. This is all the way up to 100k. Let's go to 20k. Okay, that's 20 kilohertz, and at 20 kilohertz we have about minus 4 degrees 4.56 and 16 dB. It's only 0.23 dB change from 100 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that input filter kind of does this, but wow, it's it looks pretty darn good out here. Pretty flat. Down here it says 0.22, a change of between the two cursors and a change of 13 degrees phase shift between there. That looks pretty darn good, guys. Hey guys, what do you think? This amp is pretty impressive, I think. Right now, I mean, 68 watts. Uh, it did get hot, but, you know, it's not mounted that great. I just kind of screwed it down. I didn't put any grease on it or anything like that. I still imagine it's going to get really hot. But we're going to test this with, you know, music power next time. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit, too, in the next video on this thing. But it's pretty flat, and it goes way out there. Uh, you know, the frequency response. So, and the distortion looks really flat across the frequency uh, response too. So, yeah, I think I like this amp. Right now, might be the benchmark amp to compare others to. I have that big one that I really haven't given a good test yet. And so maybe we'll run that, you know, neck to neck with this guy. Or run that head to head with this guy and see how that one compares. Maybe that'll become the amp. And, uh... Yeah, there we go.